Good evening, everyone. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. We are in the last day of this week and we are almost done with this course. After this session, we are going to have two more sessions and then it is the end of this course. So we are going to begin right now because it's for the time. Yesterday we were um, talking that we have two verbs that we are going to use in these last topics that we are going to perform or we are going to develop in this session. So we have tell and ask. And we were talking that those verbs were, um, we are going to use them for the um, phone calls. So in this session, we are going to create a vocabulary bank uh, about uh, these kind of words that we can use in phone calls. We are going to see the words. We are going to have an example for that word. And we are going to see the meaning of that word in a sentence. And in this case, it is talking about um, phone calls or the telephone or the cell phone. So first, we are going to talk about um, how difficult it is to have this kind of communication with people. Uh, when we are using the cell phone or we are uh, doing some phone calls, because in this case, for some people, it's complicated to create this kind of conversation through the phone. But in English, is another thing that is very difficult because we are going to develop this part because it is very important that you understand this. So it says that if you answer the phone and you hear someone speaking in English, don't be afraid to reply. It says when we answer the phone and hear someone that is talking in English, we need to be very um, relaxed. We are not going to be afraid to reply. The fear of talking on the phone in a second language will disappear if you practice often. So one of the main things that we need to do is practice. If we are learning a second language or we are learning another language and we are not talking about English, English in this case, it is um, about any language that we are going to um, learn. If we don't practice producing the language, we cannot be like very comfortable with that language. So in that case, we need to practice to feel um, secure about the words that we are going to produce with someone else. We need to practice hearing a conversation. We need to practice uh, uh, having conversation with uh, friends or with someone that we are uh, learning English in this moment, for example. But the thing is to practice the language. Most people find speaking on the phone in a language that's not their own quite difficult. At first, because they can see other people's uh, eyes, mouth, and body movements or body language. In face-to-face -face conversation, we communicate not only with words, but also with our eyes, with facial expressions like smiles and frowns, and by moving our hands and bodies. When speaking on the phone, however, all you can use is a spoken language. But speaking on the phone will become much easier after you learn the special vocabulary and phrases that we are going to develop this night. And you have to practice, practice them. A telephone have changed a lot over the years before the first mob, mobile phone or cell phones were invented over 30 years ago. Nearly everyone used phones connected to telephone lines. This line ran to telephone exchange in which calls were connected through a switchboard. This 
landline phones are still being used in some places, but most people now use mobile phones or a smartphone. These phones send signals through the air rather than through physical telephone lines. The most advanced phones are called smartphones. These are like small computers with many functions besides making telephone calls. You can send text message. In this case, when we are saying the text message, it is something that make our life easier because we are not going to talk with people. In this case, we are going to send messages and we, need, we don't need to use the voice because we are afraid to talk with other people. Also, we can take and send photos record and play audio and video files, connect to the internet and do much more. Even though telephone technology has changed a lot over the years, the language and vocabulary used when making a call has remained mostly the same. So why are we talking like this? Why are we talking about um, telephone and the evolution of this? Because in the first moment that some people use the first telephone or the first cell phone, they use a specific language. And in this case, the language is almost the same. The thing is that the, the, telephone, the, the telephones uh, have changed a lot because now we have the smartphones that are smaller and most intelligent and have a lot of functions. So, we need to see different things. First, we are going to learn a vocabulary about phone calls. Then we are going to practice these ones in our daily life. And another thing that is important is that in phone calls, we are not going to see other people's face. Para esta parte de las phone calls o de las llamadas telefónicas, estamos diciendo que hay una parte muy importante. Cuando hablamos por teléfono, no estamos viendo a la otra persona, no le vemos los gestos, que es algo que nos ayuda a nosotros a entender mejor el mensaje que nos quiere dar. No vemos las manos, la boca, los gestos, si se ríe, si está enojado o algo por el estilo. Pero vamos a mejorar esa situación porque a veces estamos asustados de hacer llamadas telefónicas en otro idioma. But now we are going to use some vocabulary that we are going to develop and we are going to use in the future. So we are going to have a telephone vocabulary. We are going to have some words. We are going to use some examples and then we are going to talk about the meaning of this word or sentences or phrases that we are going to use in telephone calls. So we are going to share the screen. And we are going to develop, we are going to have these, uh, these verbs behind for a moment. And we are going to see the vocabulary because it's more important to have a vocabulary before to talk about the verbs. So we have this one. Telephone vocabulary. We have uh, many of the words and terms that we use to talk about telephones and using them with example sentences and a special meaning related to the landline phones, mobile phone and a smartphone. The thing with this vocabulary is that we are going to use not the smartphone. We are going to use the different type of um, telephone that we have. Para este vocabulario no nos vamos a enfocar solamente en los smartphones, en los teléfonos más nuevos, sino que vamos a utilizar también los otros tipos de teléfonos que ya tenemos. ¿Por qué? Porque a veces utilizamos los teléfonos de línea o teléfono de casa como se le conoce and all of that. So now we are going to have the word, the example and the meaning. So we have here, first we are going to, to write the word. Then we are going to write the example. And then we are going to write the meaning. 
Now, for the first one, we are going to see which one is the first word that we are going to learn. We have a verb. And this one is the word answer. This one is a verb, it's an action. And we have an example. I phone to shop. I phone to the shop. But nobody answered. So I guess they are close. So we have here the first word to use when we are talking about phone calls. And it's a very simple word, answer. That is the verb. Y en español esa palabra significa contestar or recibir in, in este caso. So the example, I phone, in this case it is in past, but I did not write the D. I phone to the shop, but nobody answered. In this case, it is the verb in past. So I guess they are close. Llamé a la tienda, pero ni, nadie contestó. Así que creo que está cerrado. So that's the use for that verb. And the meaning, it says to take the call Take the call and speak after a phone has rung. So in this case, we are creating this kind of vocabulary and we are going to apply the meaning for that specific vocabulary. We know that we have this word answer that in Spanish is contestar, but in this case, we are going to create that meaning for this situation. So the meaning says to take the call and speak after a phone has rung. Es tomar la llamada y hablar después de que el teléfono sonó. So in that case, the meaning that we are going to use for telephone vocabulary is this one for the verb answer. So we are going to continue with the number two. We have a noun. In this case, we have a noun and it says answering machine. This is a noun and we have the example. Leave, leave a message on the answering machine and I will call you back when I can. This is a typical message that people have on the phones when they cannot answer the call. So in this case, the answering machine is la contestadora. So we have the example, leave a message on the answering machine and I will call you back when I can. So we have the meaning, a recording device, A caller can leave a spoken. So 
It says a recording device, a caller can leave a spoken message on if their call isn't answered. So in this case, it is a device in which we can leave a message. Es la eh, contestadora un eh, dispositivo para grabar mensajes que las personas pueden dejar su, su mensaje hablado, ¿verdad? In this case, spoken language or a spoken message. Si no se puede contestar la llamada. Number three. We have busy or engage, and these ones are adjectives. We have adjectives, busy or engage. If the line's busy and you can get through, call again later. So in this case, already being used. So in this case, it is talking about when we use the line or the phone and we are in another phone call and it, the line is busy. So in this case, we're talking about cuando las líneas están ocupadas. That's the meaning. Cuando las líneas están ocupadas. In this case, if the line is busy and you can get through, call again later. Already being used of a telephone line or number. Um, Esto pasa más que todo con programas televisivos o de radio o something like that, in which we want to give a call for that station and we can do it because they are really, really eh, busy. So, cuando tenemos esta palabra nos referimos a que la línea está llena, está ocupada eh, o está siendo ocupada por otra um, llamada o por otro número, whatever it is. So we have number four. So we have another one that is almost, um, it is kind of the same, but some kind of different. We have busy signal or in this case, engage tone. And these ones are not um, adjectives. These ones are nouns. And we have the example. Mom's always on the phone after dinner, so I will get a busy signal if I call now. In the meaning for this one, it's the sound you hear if you dial a landline number that's already been used. This is about the sound, the tone of the phone.
So in this case, we're not talking about the adjective, we are talking about the noun, and it's talking about the sound. En el primero, teníamos que son adjetivos, que es, eh, nos está dando más información sobre que la línea está siendo usada. Pero en la segunda, siempre habla de lo mismo, sí, pero en este caso está hablando del sonido que, que se hace cuando un teléfono está ocupado. So in this case, it's about the sound. And the first one, it's about um, the line. It's talking about the line and giving more information about the line. Now we have another one and we have another noun. In this case, it is not the verb, it is a noun. We have call, but we are going to use it as a noun. I'm sorry. I really have to take this call. So in this case, we know that we have a um, call as a verb because it is an action, but in this case, we are not using it as a verb because we are not doing this as an action. In this case, it is um, talking about the act of telephoning someone or a telephone conversation. In the example sets, I'm sorry, but I really have to take this call. In this case, it is a noun. Tenemos call, que sabemos que es un verbo, es la acción de llamar, pero en este caso no lo vamos a utilizar como un verbo, lo vamos a utilizar como un nombre, porque en el ejemplo dice, lo siento, pero en realidad tengo que tomar esta llamada, no the action of calling someone. It's the noun, it's a noun. Y es el acto de llamar o hacer, o, o hacer llamadas a alguien o una eh, llamada telefónica. So in this case, it is not the verb, it is a noun. And then we have the same one, but in verb. And we have the example. If you need a lift home, call me and I'll come and get you. And in this case, the meaning is to try to contact someone by phone. So in this case, we are talking about the verb. And it says, if you need a lift home, call me and I come and get you. And this is, uh, the, the meaning is to try to contact someone by phone 
either by dialing their number or finding their name in the list of contacts on a mobile or a smartphone. Este sí es el verbo. En este caso sí estamos utilizando la palabra call como un verbo, no como un nombre. Porque aquí específicamente nos habla de la acción de llamar. Si necesitas que te lleve a casa o un aventón, ¿verdad? Podemos llamarlo de esa manera. Llámame y vendré a traerte, vendré a recogerte. Y en este el, el significado es tratar de contactar a alguien por teléfono de alguna de estas maneras, ya sea marcando el número o encontrando el nombre en la lista de contactos que se crea en el celular. And we have two different forms, the noun and the verb. Now, we have another one. We have someone um, that's kind of uh, the same, but in this case, it's about the, the people and its color. That is a noun. And it says, I spoke to hundreds of callers every day. While I was a receptionist. So the meaning is the person who calls a cell phone number. So in this case, we're talking about people. In este caso, estamos hablando de las personas, el que llama. I spoke to hundreds of callers every day when I was a receptionist. Hablé con cientos de eh, personas o, o de personas que llaman todos los días mientras era recepcionista. And this is the person who calls a telephone number. Es la persona que llama a un número de teléfono. So we are going to have another one and it says church or we church. And this one is a verb, it's an action. And it says, don't forget to charge your phone before you go camping. And the meaning is to connect So in this case, it's talking about to connect a smartphone. In this case, we're going to use just the cell phone. Is to connect the cell phone uh, to an elect electricity source to add power to its battery. So charge or recharge is a verb. Es un verbo que habla de conectar nuestro teléfono a la electricidad o a una fuente de electricidad para agregar energía a su batería. We have conference call. And this is a noun.
I am having a conference call with some old friends tonight. So in this kind of conference call, it's to have a telephone um, telephone call. In this case, I'm going to change this one because it is the action I have a telephone call in which three or more people can hear and speak with one another. In this case, we are not talking about this kind of conference or this kind of meeting like in this that we are having right now because in this case, we're uh, seeing each other's faces, but in this kind of conference call, it is not possible. It is just to use the uh, telephone or the cell phone to uh, speak with two or more people in which we hear their voices. It's very confusing because uh, in some cases, all of the people want to speak and it can be very chaotic. But in this case, it is a conference call. Para estas eh, llamadas de conferencia, eh, son aquellas llamadas en las que tres o más personas están en la llamada, en la línea, y pueden escuchar y, y hablar con la otra persona. Pueden ser muy caóticas, pero son, eh, existen y se pueden realizar con frecuencia. So we have another one, and this one is less on.
So we have two uh, words right now in a cordless phone that is an hour. In dial, that is a verb. The first one is uh, landline telephone receiver you can carry for short distances while using. That's something that you can carry from one place to another for short distances. Then we have dial, that is the verb. In this case, it's talking about to press numbers on a landline phone, uh, or in this case, um, we can touch the numbers in the smartphone on a keep keypad to call someone. In this case, the last one is to marcar los números. Um, en lo, en ya sea en un um, en un teléfono de estos de casa, como lo llamamos nosotros acá, o teléfono fijo, la is the landline. Or we can use it in, in the cell phone and the smartphone. So we can dial numbers on both of them. So in the first one, uh, the cordless phone, it's talking about the telephono inalámbrico. Those um, phones that uh, were very famous in some years ago that we use that kind of uh, phones that we have the base in one place and the telephone in another place and we can carry them around the house. El primero es aquel teléfono inalámbrico que tenía su base pero que nosotros podíamos tomarlo a diferentes lugares de la casa. Y el segundo es marcar los números en el teléfono. In this case, we have dialing tone or dial tone. This is not the same as the ones that we have in the first spaces. In this case, it's talking about um, the sound that a flat landline phone makes when you pick it up. Esta es eh, un tono, ¿verdad? Que se utiliza en los teléfonos eh, fijos in uh, which we hear that sound when we pick up the phone and we don't put in the base. Son aquellos sonidos que se hace cuando se levanta el teléfono no se vuelve a poner a la base. And that's why the example says, I think the line's dead. There is no dial tone when you pick up the phone. Cuando levantamos el teléfono oímos un sonido, un, un, un eh, tono en específico. But in this case, when we don't hear that sound, we can say that is the dialing tone or dial tone. And we can say that the line is dead when we don't hear that sound. Now we have another verb here, that is this one, and it's hang up.
hotspot or Wi-Fi hotspot. And we have the first one, it says, someone called, but as soon as they hear my voice, they hung up. And the meaning is to end a telephone call. En este caso es colgar la llamada. That is the meaning of this word. Or in this case, it's a phrase, a short phrase. Then the second one, hotspot or Wi-Fi hotspot. Why don't we use that free Wi-Fi hotspot at a public library? The meaning is a place where people can get internet access either for free or by using a network access password. In this case, is a eh, un lugar en el que podemos utilizar la red de internet, ya sea de forma gratuita o poniéndole una contraseña. In this case, asking for the password of the Wi-Fi hotspot. So then we have another one. We have icon that is a noun. And we have the example. The icon for email on my phone is a white envelope on a blue square. And the meaning is a graphic symbol or picture In this case, the icon, it's a noun, and we have the example. The icon for email on my phone is a white envelope or a blue square. Este icono es un símbolo gráfico, una imagen que está en nuestro teléfono o computadora que representa una aplicación o un documento o cualquier cosa que tengamos en el teléfono y que se abre cuando lo tocamos. En el ejemplo dice que el icono o el símbolo para sus correos el que tiene en el teléfono es blanco, un sobre blanco con un eh, cuadro azul. This word we were um, talking about this word before because it was implied in um, another example, but in this case we are going to have just the name. In this case, it's the landline. That is a noun. And we have the example.
in this case is talking about the physical ones or the physical lines that we use in our houses. So that is a good question because if everyone has a smartphone, it is really necessary to have this kind of phones on our house. So, in el caso de esta landline, el, el significado es a physical telephone line. Es una línea específica de teléfono o un teléfono que use ese tipo de líneas. So, son este tipo de teléfonos que se mantienen aún en muchas casas. Then we have line or connection. And in this case, we have here that it is a noun. And it says the line was really bad. So I call again. to get a better connection. And the meaning for this one is a telephone connection used to make a voice call. We have missed call. That is um, a very easy uh, expression because we use this a lot. So we have missed call. And this one is a noun. And it says, I checked my missed calls every day, I mean every night in this case, in case I miss an important one. And we have the meaning. A call that wasn't answered. So in this case, it's not necessary to explain a lot about this expression because it is something very uh, easy to understand. So in this case, we are talking about a call that wasn't answered. Es una llamada que no se recibió, es una llamada perdida. We, can say that in, 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 in Spanish. Es una llamada que no recibimos. Maybe we were very busy and we can uh, answer those calls. But it's necessary to check if we have another uh, missed call and maybe it is important. We are almost ending, so that's very good. We have mobile phone. or also called cell phone or feature phone. This is a noun. And we have the example. Oh no. Oh no, I left my mobile phone in the taxi. That's very bad. This is a very bad sentence because it is something that 
um, have happened to us in some places, right? But in this case, is the person left the mobile phone in the taxi and maybe lost it. A portable phone with a SIM card for network connection with more features than a landline phone, but fewer than a smartphone. This is not a smartphone. This is a mobile phone like the um, old ones. So these mobile phones are the old ones that has a um, network connection and has more features than a landline because in this case is something that we can use outside the house, but they have fewer uh, features than a, a smartphone because there are the old ones. And now the um the technology it's very very uh, different than in the past years so we have here this uh, vocabulary that we can use when we are talking about a uh, phone calls that we are talking about um cell phones cell phones smartphones and that kind of technology so in this case we are going to uh, have this vocabulary um at this point, because we have some more words that we can use, but we are going to say it in the next session because it is almost time to end and we are going to have two more sessions the next week because it is almost time to end this course and we have just more two more days. So if you are not um on day with the exercises, you have time to do it. But remember, we don't have a lot of time. We have less days uh, because this is another session that we are going to end. And then we are going to have just um, tomorrow, the weekend, and then two more days because we are going to um, we are going to end this session very very soon. So. You need to be on date with the platform. So saying that, we are going to end the session here. Have a really, really good night and have an amazing weekend. We are going to see each other on Monday. So we are going to end this session here. Thank you for being here and have a good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night, on Monday. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night.